guys. I wanted to share in my blog some information for today. I am 19 weeks pregnant and I will read you from my Pee to Pumpkin book. So, it says, what is driving me the most crazed right now? I would have to say my back. Oh my goodness, my back is seriously ugh, irritating me. I've tried pillows, everything. I think it's time to invest in a pregnancy pillow, but I don't want to hog the bed too because of my husband. It asks me the thing I'm not worried about. Mm, well, I'm not worried about regular birth, I guess. That's what you'd call it. I'm having a C-section, so I'm just more focused on my C-section and after that and preparing to get better and all that other stuff. Um, the baby can hear me now. I'm wondering what she's probably hearing. Well, I love to sing, and if anybody knows me, I'm horrible at it, but I still love it. And probably some other stuff that baby shouldn't be hearing, like my potty mouth sometimes. <laughs> and my emotions this week are crazy. Having meltdowns, getting mad, being a brat, being happy, being excited. I mean, there's so much going on. And then it says, baby, I hope you always have enough. I will save that until the end. And here is what, what my size of my baby is. Week 19, 8.5 ounces, the size of an orange. So I think a random orange is about this big. So my baby's this big. Also, today I went to my pediatric surgeon and um, I wrote, I had, I posted a blog about gastroschisis, a small one, and I kind of talked about it a little bit but didn't full on talk. So, gastroschisis is a abnormal, abnormality. Um, I try not to say defect because. It doesn't sound great, so I will say that. Now, my baby's brain is developing good. My baby's heart rate, you know, fingers, toes, legs is great. The only detail of my baby's front area is the intestines are laying outside in the amniotic fluid. So, depending on what intestines, I can't tell you exactly the doctor can't tell you exactly you have to wait till the baby's out in order to determine that um, so I have been dealing with that which you know it's it's intense for a new mom you know you don't assume this stuff's gonna happen so anyways I went to a pediatric surgeon today who is going to be doing the two or more surgeries that may be needed on my baby his name is Dr. Johnson, and he gave me all the info that I need, good and bad. Yes, good and bad, because in this kind of time, you just can't focus on the positive. You have to brace yourself for everything. Um, he gave me an example of a 1 to 10 scale of babies. So you have 10 babies, and one being, one being the one that needs the most care. So that would be a transplant. The baby would go to Seattle, Washington, even San Diego, California. And then there's a 10, which, you know, baby is fine. No, nothing wrong, goes about his normal life, you know, up until old age, everything. He set me at a five to six because you don't really know what to expect until the baby's born with everything. It could, it could possibly, you know, the liver could be out, so it could have a swollen liver. Um, you know, all these things can happen, so you have to just wait and see. And my doctor said that if he starts to see swelling in the intestines, then baby comes out, 
baby could come out very early, you know, baby could come out on the 7th when baby's supposed to come out. It all just depends. Um, he did, gave, he gave me an, a percentage of a chance of my baby living. It's an 80% chance. Now most people, they go, oh, 80% chance, that's nothing, you know, that's so good. No, it's not, okay? I want a 100% chance. And that's what everybody needs to understand. You know, I don't, I don't want an 80% chance. No one wants an 80% chance with their child. You know, yes, of course, it's not 50, 40, but I mean, 80 is still not good enough. For any mother that is going through anything like this. So with the power of God and prayer and faith. We just hope that everything goes well. You know. Um, even though someone can say the sweetest things. It could never, could never be enough. Sometimes the best comfort is just silence. And um. Life is taken for granted sometimes. You may be in a fight. You may have the smallest thing that can drive you crazy. But it could be a lot worse. And for me, I can't dwell on that stuff anymore. I'm growing up. You know, I have a child on the way. Things are in a different perspective now. And for me... I just, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm excited, I have all these emotions, and I hope, I hope this helps, hope this helps my friends, that, you know, sometimes I haven't, I don't speak to them, you know, I hope this helps you, or family members, I hope this helps you, or random people, I hope this helps you, I hope somewhere along the lines this helps you because I know there's people out there that are going to the same thing that have been to the same thing and I just haven't met them but I will I will and of course I always wondered about moms with kids who need extra care and wonder what goes through their heads and and now I'm living it and it's devastating and sometimes I don't I don't I don't like to accept it or sometimes you know in the beginning I didn't accept it and that that's may seem selfish but until you understand until you go through what every person goes through with defects or abnormalities then you can't judge a person by the way they feel but I accept it I do and I understand and I'm living I'm living I'm I'm living with this and and no matter what anybody says that may be uplifting it's just one of those things in order to feel it you have to go through it you know and I'm glad I have my husband and I'm glad I have my friends and you know my family and my in-laws being even the closest ones the newest ones whatever you know I have those people and I love them dearly but it's like I'm blank sometimes and I don't know know what to say or do or sometimes I don't know enough and it goes back to you know did I not take that pill did I eat that hot dog you know and I blame myself but even though everybody even the doctors tell me it wasn't my fault sometimes you can't help but Having people being there and supporting me, baby, and my husband is the best thing people can do. Even if it's a text, even if it's a smile, a written note, anything. We love it so much. I hope this blog helps you and I hope you follow me on YouTube. And I hope it answers questions or gives you answers. But somewhere along the way... It will help you understand what baby and I are going through. Because I know sometimes I don't really express myself, 
you know, when people ask about on Facebook. You know, I have been, but when I write something on Facebook, I know people are going to want to know, well, if you follow me on my channel, which is this, then you'll understand and it may help you. And of course, you can leave questions on here and I can video back. So, I'm strong. We all are. And I... And I know everybody has a story, whether it has to do with a, a child with a defect, yourself, anything. You know, we all have our own stories, so this one's mine. So, let's open back up to week 19. And let's finish the rest of this. So, getting back to this baby. I hope you always have enough. I hope you always have enough. Enough love, enough, enough nutrients, enough health, enough supportive words, just enough of everything. Me and your daddy are going to give you the world. And if we can't give you the world, then we're going to try our hardest to give you something very close to it but we love you and whatever this outcome may be we'll never stop loving you mm. bye